Yeah, yeah turkey bacon. There. Turkey bacon's fine. Yeah, everybody's I mean, but I've always Salud. felt like turkey bacon's fine. Yo, don't. It, it all depends on the preparation. I uh, I, I've just been like, whenever people are like, oh, you've never even had bacon. I'm like, dude, I have turkey bacon all the time. No. See, well, it's true. I won't say it's better than bacon. Right. You're not even calling turkey bacon bacon. I would call turkey bacon bacon. Eh, but I like would. turkey bacon. Sounds disrespectful. To bacon. Whomst? I would say turkey bacon. <laughs> to <whomst? laughs> I would say turkey bacon without like I would never say call turkey bacon. So by when, the name when you bacon. say bacon, you are not defaulting to turkey bacon. And I feel like you are not including turkey bacon. That's, but that's, that's true. Pers- that's that's true. me personally. And it's I'm gonna true. take two steps back here. But no yeah, it's fine. Not everything ha- and this might not be a quotable, but not everything has to be inclusive. That's not everything's not no, for everybody. That's true. That's true. Like people <laughs> who can't digest beef like me or a pork or whatever. I don't think it's a matter that you can't. You just don't no, do it no, well. No, <laughs> you, no. Your body just doesn't do I it well. I had beef ribs mm-hmm. for the first time in my life. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. And um, it didn't, it ended as fine as it could have, but I'm not going to say it ended well. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't excel You're here. in its performance. It didn't excel in its performance. I understand what you're saying. No um, health insurance. So uh, it's a risky move on my part. I'll admit. Um, we are the choices we make. Um, all right. Uh, uh, but yeah, no. I, turkey bacon's fine. It ain't bacon, but it's see, <laughs> it's not though. And, but I, I, feel, I can't. But I, I feel I like mean, I feel like people need to be okay with that. that. That's like saying like I mean like like you don't. I don't. You're like, about to say please. No, don't. no. It's not. It's like saying. But I don't. Hello, everyone. Hi, Sterling. You're not everyone. Hi, Sterling. I am some of the everyone. Barflies. Hi, Mary. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. <laughs> Barflies. We welcome you to. Booze. Booze. A news. News. And review. Review. In the year of our Lord Arceus 2022. Now, I Your am, Lord Arceus. I'm just saying. I don't believe in him. That is your That is your right. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I respect it. I just, I, like I said, your Lord. No, I, colonize it. <laughs> just, <laughs> I didn't take away from what you chose. I think you should colonize him to make him believe it. Mm. So... Okay. <laughs> BNR as brought to you by the Blurred Bar. Now, Starting off early. I am the pride of New Bark Town, the stalwart shield of South Philly, ace trainer, Argent. And I am joined by two of my closest friends in this multiverse. And I'm sure multiple other ones. Uh, but they can introduce themselves. Starting with the man in mm. the hat. The hawk from the heavens got stuff to say and he going to do it all day. Talk yo, to yo, the people, yo, yo. man. It's the last descendant of the Yasuke. Uh. Sub over dub for all anime. Uh. Salsa dancing ninja. Stay on his toes. Yeah. Got a sake flight ready to go. Give me the loop. It's your boy, Hawkins <laughs> Hanzo. <laughs> Hawkins, Hanzo. I'm sorry. I, I still. So you. we're staying with this for this uh, season. I mean, none. I just, just for now, guys. All right. just, just, I just want to make sure, like, when just, people identify you, when, that they do it correctly. It's just whatever I say at the time. All right, cool. Well, oh, and you know what? I'm not by myself. Oh. As a matter of fact, I'm I'm in somebody else's house. Whose house am I in? Well, run. So- oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, man. I wish I could say I could. I want to go home. <laughs> But I'm already already here. here. That's right. It's Big Dan. Big Dan. It's Rodan. (sighs) Coming at you live from the 215. Your comic book connoisseur. It's Somalia sci fi and superheroes here to welcome you to another episode of BNR My Bar Flies. How you doing? That's right. I don't know if I can keep saying 215 since there's so many other numbers like attached to Philadelphia. 267. And that's really it. I mean, 484. You could possibly get a 484. You can get a 610. You could get a 610. But where are you coming at us from? You but I'm at, I'm coming at you live from the two one five. Two one two one five. That's true. But I feel like you know, gotta start expanding two as we continue to grow. That's right. I'm so tired. <laughs> We're talking about some stuff today. We have some booze. We have some booze. News, and uh, booze. drunken master. Hey. That's right. He is he is aged like a fine wine. He is oh, here. We coming at you in 2022 with new booze. New new and new we, booze. Talk to us, Jayhawk. All right. (laughs) 
and welcome, welcome to, to another round of shot seat. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the shot seat is one member of the blur bar. Josh will be getting asked <laughs> questions by another member of the blur bar. That's me. Um, Josh, you know, get your warm ups in on whenever you are ready. Let's go. Oh, okay. he said he was ready. All right. Do it. Name six characters oh, no. who have obtained the rank of captain of the Gotai 13 in the series Bleach. This is <laughs> unrelated. This is actually pretty funny. We were having this conversation about the captains. <laughs> Me and Josh. Hitsugaya Toshiro. One. It's fucked up there. Uh, and it could be from any time period. So sure. after in the Thousand Year War. Sure. Byakuya. Okay. Uh, Kishin uh, Ichigo. What? I'm sorry. Kishin uh, Kurosaki. Okay. I know. I know who you're talking about. Ishin. <coughs> Ishin. Ishin. Yeah. Um, I think Dan just over here like, mm hmm. <laughs> yep. yeah. Sure. Uh, I know who I'm picturing. Uno Hana? Uno yeah. Hana? You, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, um, Yamato. Oh. Gen oh. Ryu. <laughs> he was. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Um, and then finally, I will say Aizen. He's good. He's good. He's good. That is, that is technically correct, which Better is the him. best kind of correct. <laughs> Better him than me. I would have been like, go ahead and pass me that. Dog ball. Right. Uh, glasses ball. That's the thing. Uh, like, you said Maru names. Ball. You right. said names. When you like, said names, fuck. I was like, I am not that much of a fan. Yeah. <laughs> well, Josh, I was like, redhead ball, yeah, like no. brownhead ball. Sterling Brunette Brunette Ball, Ball, Sterling Ball, Sterling so that Sword Ball, like you know. If there was anyone to be like, nah, that's not him. It would have been Sterling to yeah. be like, got that wrong. Glad it was. I'm glad Arguments. it wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll be back. And now back to our schedule preju- th- yeah. Now back to our <laughs> regular schedule, schedule program. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta slow down. That's what you got to. So what we have here, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna pass it over after you see it, boop, Thanks. and then I'll put a picture up. Thanks. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read about it, and then you guys can uh, sip as you like. But this is uh, Bro Brothers Bourbon Whiskey, 41 percent alcohol. Uh, headquartered in Louisville, Kentucky, Bro Brothers is officially the first African American owned distillery in the state of Kentucky. Wow. Kentucky-born co-founders and brothers, Victor, Bryson, and Christian Yarbrough, started from humble beginnings in Louisville West, uh, where they learned early about hard work and dedication. They took those lessons, traveled the globe, and brought their newfound knowledge of the spirits industry back to Kentucky, where the vision of where the vision for Bro Brothers was established. Through Bro Brothers, the Yarbroughs plan to make a positive and lasting impact through job through job creation and economic development with their local and global communities. They designed their bottle to represent Kentucky's uh, vibrant culture to the world: bourbon, basketball, boxing, and horse racing. Taste: a medium body flavor featuring fruity notes of green apple and pear. It also has subtle hints of ginger and nutmeg. Featuring a golden honey color. Nose. Attractive floral aromas of red roses in bloom with fragrant apples and nutmeg. Finish. Smooth finish filled with hints of baking spices, ginger, and nutmeg. Bro Brothers Bourbon Whiskey. I have to say, I was, on on first taste, I was like, mm unimpressed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then uh as i was sipping again for the second second sip josh was describing some things and i was looking then starting to look for those things and so my palate was just like oh okay this is actually more complex the second time around at least on the first you know the first taste you're like you want to just see how it hits mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but this uh this is 
mature in the in the sense that like you're not just drinking to drink an alcohol like you're drinking this to experience it um at the same time uh, i have to give my honest review i would say if i had i'm lo- i'm just looking here but uh <laughs> i'm going to say a 3.7 I'd almost give it a four, but I, I, at the same time, I feel like we've had some other ones that have just kind of like just went. A, the, the finish isn't as smooth as it, I would say it is. Okay. Yeah. Or as uh, it says it is. But I'm going to keep drinking now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe that will change. I, um, I think this is great, and I'm going to tell you why, right? Uh, tasting the. Because this is booze. No, just kidding. Go ahead. It is booze. Nizzo. You are correct. Um, tasting upon first sip, like, it wasn't harsh, but it had presence. You know how they say, like, don't be aggressive, but be assertive? It's like, yeah, sure. This is, this, is, this, <laughs> this is, is that. This is good communication. This is a velvet, <laughs> this is a velvet color. Bro brothers. Covered. Good right. communication. Um, I, and, I'll accept that. <laughs> and the, the fruitiness came through almost immediately, and it was. Like, it is like a fresh apple, like a fresh pear, yeah. like, this ain't you got you got this from Produce Junction. This ain't no Shoprite pair. It's like, hey, you know, easy there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying Shoprite sponsors us. I'm just saying if they did <laughs> or are planning on doing it, they don't want to anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, that the fruitiness, uh, the nutmeg is just so subtle, dude. Like I, I didn't even. I was like something there. I know what it is, and then you said it. And I was like, ah. Um, but this is great. Yeah, definitely easy four four out of five. I mm-hmm. think this is great. Um, the warmth that comes from it, which is why yeah. I drink bourbon, is uh is good. It feel like a hug. Okay. You need, do, you, <laughs> do you need a hug right now? No. Uh, you sure? <laughs> no, I'm gonna keep Don't drink. touch me. I'm gonna keep drinking. <laughs> um, Same thing. You need a hug. No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> My job. Don't touch me. I don't. Anywho. Um. So. I uh I do agree about the green apple, right? It, that's it's what it's, it's a shine. Yeah, it shines green through. Apple, I think that's like coming through. Um, as a whiskey, I am not a whiskey drinker per se, um, but it does give me those. It gives me all of the standard flavor profiles of a whiskey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so for that, um, with that being said, I do think um. Like you said, the uh, the light, uh, subtle, subtle hints of ginger and nutmeg, they are like very, very subtle. Which is interesting for ginger too, because ginger usually be like, "Hey, yeah, I'm here." <laughs> I'm. Um, pr- I would almost argue that they only did like a sl- thin <laughs> slice of ginger <laughs> and dropped and it like into the it dropped it like- into the <laughs> dropped it into the barrel and was like, and then, and then it. threw it away. Uh, <laughs> that's enough. Uh, it's very subtle, but I think for me, it's mainly the, the green apple that's coming through. Um, in a good way. Sure, yeah. Uh, all that being said, I would give it uh, personally a three uh, out of five. I don't think it's horrible. Um, once again, I'm not a whiskey, like, Guy. that's not like my thing. Rum See, is. So. And that's, that's the only reason why it gets higher on my list, because mm-hmm. I am a whiskey, and a whiskey guy, and I'm like, this is a whiskey I would drink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if I have... The other, like my other favorites on my list, this may not beat those out. That's gotcha. all I'm saying. Yeah, it's gonna make a really good old fashioned. Sure. I think so. I, yeah, I think this would probably mix very well. Like all of the the bourbon drinks that you can make with this, I think this would be really a, a good with a um, nice little fresh apple base. slice Sheesh, on the yeah. a nice green apple. Yeah, and a, yeah, yeah, yes. This, this is a good nice foundation to like start your mixed drink. That's although. true. Um, so yeah, three out of five. Respect my peoples. Yeah. Bro brothers. And welcome back to Shotzi. Shot, 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 shot. Question shot, number two. Shot, Josh, let me know when you're ready. Okay, go ahead. In the series Metabots. Metabots. What is the name of the mysterious power that Meta B can wield? Oof. Mm. Oof. Is it the Meta Force? He's good. Wow. He's good. He's good. He's good. 
He's good. <laughs> That's just bad writing. Right. <laughs> no, it's English just, dubbing. <laughs> um, but the okay. Metaphor. I was like, if he don't get this, <laughs> I might have to go. <laughs> I might just have to leave my own house. <laughs> but and now back to our regularly scheduled program. Right, so who's got some news? Big damn. I got a few pieces of news. Oh, um, the Super Bowl took place. Um, sure. Super and, um, ow. You know, the halftime show, I mean, that's, <laughs> the halftime show was the halftime show. And I, you know, take it or leave it. I think it was a great halftime show as far as like hip hop was concerned mm-hmm. and blackness. I, um, I feel like Kendrick was the best performer. Better than Mary J. Blue. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm trying not to get canceled so quickly. I, I didn't it, like Mary for, J. Black for me performance as much as I liked everybody else's. For me personally, Kendrick Lamar usually always has. Like, he has a, a great very set piece. It's like, just yeah. like it's very planned out. It's very thoughtful. Like yeah. you're you're trying to see what he's trying to allude to. And exactly. there was, I, I mean, for anyone who remembers Meteor Man, like <laughs> it was there. Like regardless of how you, I don't know if that was his intention, but I <laughs> but thought it, it immediately. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, I always used to feel like I was supposed to be born on the West Coast. Hmm. I've always felt that way. Like all my favorite sports teams were on the West Coast. Like, yeah. Whoa. Except for <laughs> the Eagles. Eagles. Nope. I said what I said. All right. Well, he said. Uh, double down. <clears throat> I said what I said. Recording. <laughs> I mean, what y'all going to do? Fight me? Like. I'm not. <laughs> okay. So anyway. If you don't like Big Dan's opinions, please tell us in the comments. Sure, but it's my opinion. So, <laughs> if you have no power here. What news you got, big fella? <laughs> <laughs> Other things that occurred during the Super Bowl. Some trailers dropped. Sure. Uh, some pretty iconic ones, by the way. If I feel, you know, once again, my opinion, before everybody starts getting all aggressive. <laughs> uh, the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness trailer dropped. Um, and for anyone that is familiar with uh, the voice of Patrick Stewart. You heard it. Um, I don't know what that means, but I I know what it means to me. I'm like, "Mm, Marvel's Illuminati? Maybe. Um, Mm -hmm. Maximus, right? There were some other uh, visual hints to some things. You saw uh, Defenders Strange uh, in the iconic Defenders Doctor Strange costume. Um. You know, not a lot of news information from the teaser trailer and even the trailer that you've seen at the end of uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm excited. I'm very excited for this. Um, if you By this time, if you've watched our podcast episode, you know that I'm like, very excited about it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, the trailer for Nope. Oh, yeah. Drop, uh, well, Doctor Strange comes out May 6th. Uh, nope drops uh, 7 22 mm-hmm. Uh just it was a whole trailer of me saying nope. That's honestly how I felt. Like every scene was just like, I don't no, like this. Nope. No, nope. No. Nope. I don't like this. Nothing like nope. Mm-mm. Nope. So, uh, what else? There was a couple of other pieces of news here. Um, because I haven't talked to you guys about comics in a while, but a little bit. Not, um, not yet this year. Yeah, not this year, right? So, um. Iron Man is currently now listed as the Iron God because wow. of cosmic power that he took after uh, some giant battle that took place in Iron Man issue 13. So he has this cosmic power. He's currently trying to learn how to navigate that and manifest it in a way that makes sense. Uh, but at the same time, it's problematic because it's Iron Man. And if he can't get drunk, he gets drunk on power. So, uh, <clears throat> can't take that back Wait, it, it is the power cosmic right? it is the power it is Jeez. a power cosmic i don't oh, know if not it's the power. power cosmic so um yeah th- those are things that are happening on top of I'm checking to see if i had any other news um i think that says it all for me i got some news 
Jay Hawk, yes. talk to us. News, news. I got some news. I got some news. Say uh, news. Um, so what I have is uh, Shin Japan Heroes Universe, a collaboration project between the four films that Hideaki Anno has participated in. Shin Godzilla, where Anno served as screenplay writer and general director. Um, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time, known in Japan as Shin Evangelion, uh, where he was responsible for everything um <laughs> shin ultraman which is set to be released on may 13th of this year uh where he is a writer and responsible for planning and finally shin common writer which should be coming out in march 2023 where anna will be the writer and director um it is a wide range of events and projects including merchandising um and a lot of stuff being planned for the future and more information will be announced on the official website um this project will be looking to bring these four titans together under one roof to rival marvel studios mcu um hideaki hideaki uh, ano issued a statement on his involvement and the ambition of the creative venture saying this sjhu was conceived from the idea that characters that japanese culture is proud of can be brought together to spread enjoyment throughout the world. So you're pretty much getting a Japanese MCU, if you will. Um, the Anoverse, baby. <laughs> the Anoverse, pretty much. Um, and it'll be very interesting to see how he ties all of these together. I will say Ultraman is not something that I've usually been like attracted to because the art style has just never been a thing for me. Um, Kamen Rider... I recognize the toys a lot, but I never like watch the show. Um, the new movie looks has a decent graphic, as you'll see here. Um, but um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how they all tie in together and all that good stuff. But uh, I'm here for it. I'm I'm excited. It seems it seems fun. It 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 has. I'm not gonna say promise, but I'm intrigued. I'll say that. So. Sterling, nice. you got news for us? Oh, uh, yeah, we can stay in wide. Mine's is like. Too late. Really. <laughs> <laughs> the, for all of our friends who are still playing Fortnite, which is, I think, you know, somewhere between, what, 2 million people or something. I don't something, know. I don't play. I'm not one of those people. For something really strange. Uh, we have the characters of. Give me a moment. Uncharted. Thank you. Uncharted. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, the characters of Uncharted, who is Nate Drake, of course. I think Chloe's there. I think Sully's there. Um, are coming to Fortnite. I think it'll be worth talking about on a podcast. And mm. there is also in Minecraft, there is a Capcom sponsored uh, Street Fighter skins. Okay. And they, they fully endorsed and they're like, yeah. yeah. It's Minecraft. I feel like. I've just almost, be like I've almost boxy versions of like uh, Akuma. They look pretty alright, man. Yeah, they I just feel right. I feel like very aged out of those things at the moment. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like Fortnite just seems like if I wasn't there at the beginning, I'm not going to be there now. It's been mm. a bunch of seasons too. And Minecraft, same. It's so ca it's so casual. I've played it a few times and I've been like, yeah, but I also don't have the patience. To put, I feel like to Minecraft, put blocks on top of blocks. On top of blocks. I feel like Minecraft is even more like if you weren't there, then you're not going to be there than Fortnite. Like Fortnite, at the end of the day, it's like a shooter, right? Mm, like you yeah, just yeah. you got to kill. Uh, folks. Is it though? It's I don't not. Know. It's, there's, it's there's cars and Gundams and there's so much the going on in Fortnite. And yeah. So there, Grande. there's a lot of skins and whatnot, but like no, the but game, they also like you can also swing as Spider Man. Like those are things that you can do in Fortnite. Yeah. That I'm but is like, the the mission of the game to kill people? It was at one point. I don't know anymore. Uh, yeah. But so I feel like I'd I be, if I joined up, I'd be killing folk because I feel like that's the game. Of the, well, the let's of the not keep saying that out loud. Well, no, it's, I mean, it's the game of Fortnite. Right. So to me, that's something I can still like jump into and like mm -hmm. add the skin of like a Gundam or add the skin of whatever Mandalorian or whatever. Not Boba Fett. We'll get into that later. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, add that skin and then like go like play the game. But like mm -hmm. Minecraft, I I'm lost. I mean, Minecraft is more akin to Animal Crossing, where there's like, yes, there is an end goal. Yes, there is even a story mode now. But um, it's literally like, what do you want to do? All right, go do it. <laughs> like, that's it. it. It has more of an 
an artistic part to it in my experience no like sure. like i said it's casual like you don't you don't there's no real competition you can be competitive, but you don't have to be. If y'all know about competitive Minecraft, please drop the Discord link in below. <laughs> I want to know about it. There's there's competitive Minecraft in the sense of like world building and like building for you know over a hundred hours and like and I think they made building like, replicas and yeah stuff. they made like a model of the Enterprise like a, a two scale model. Of the I've Enterprise. seen people do the Taj Mahal. There's people like building the actual world, like you know <laughs> zoom. <laughs> so we did some booze and we had what some news and I think it's time for some reviews. And welcome back to the final shots. All right, Josh, this is one for all the marbles. Um, if you think Josh can make it, pause the video, go down, comment if you are a believer or non-believer. I think you can do it. All three questions. Question, final question, Josh, let me know when you're ready. Let's go. What is the name of the studio that produced older generations of anime such as Neo Human Cash Earn? Gotcha, man, and Speed Racer. See, I thought I felt like Speed Racer would have helped you out there. That was a good clue, but I don't remember. I know I don't. I'm so glad I'm not in the shot seat. <laughs> I'd be out here toasted. Um, I don't know, and I don't want to disrespect any studio or myself by saying something way off base. So I'm just gonna take that shot. Yeah. If you know the answer, please comment below and let us know. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. Now, as uh, if you're new, hello, welcome. Um, and for those returning, I love Star Wars a lot. And we're talking. So about do that. I, though. Like I feel. I mean, not to discredit your no, fan no, not at all. fandom, yeah. but I mean, that's kind of what got me here as being a blurred and just wow. overall. I mean, I'm si Somali of sci-fi and superheroes. It's so, true, I've seen it. You know, Star Wars is one of those things. But we're here to talk about the book of Boba Fett. Book of Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. I. <laughs> what was the Pokemon? Um, wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's the title of our episode. <laughs> the book of Waba Fett. Yep. Absolutely not. Yeah, yes, no, it is. You will not disrespect Finnick like that on this show. Waba Fett. Waba Fett. That's it. There's the title. We um, did. Just so you know, we did not have a working title before this, <laughs> but now we do. That's Patreon stuff. Stop telling me. No, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Can we? And, can I get into it? I want to. I want to ask first. What is it that we oh, wait, liked about is she the show? Or not? Because I like that song. <laughs> <laughs> what? We've been trying to figure this out since season like no two. you. <laughs> what is it? Because I said get into it, yeah. And then he was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need clarity on this song. Shit. <laughs> do we like Doha Cat or do we not like Doha Cat? Doha Gato. I don't. Doha Nickel. <laughs> Doha Nickel. <laughs> Doha Nickel Chan. <laughs> well, we know how Josh feels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> me personally, still, I'm still trying to navigate that. Kawaii this now, you know say. All right, that's enough of that. All right. My question was being posed bro, to the group, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bros. Um, I was gonna ask, what about the show do we like before we talk about our dislikes? <laughs> before we talk about the rest of the show, right? Josh, <laughs> Josh, I'm really interested in your opinion. You, you, Josh, can you move over just a little bit? Like you're you not have stated shot, that uh, some shows are on the outskirts of things that you would watch involving Star Wars, sure. um, such as you know Obi Wan, The Bad Batch. Sure. So, I'm really Obi Wan is not out yet, by the way. Not yet, no. Sure. So I'm really interested, but he has you have expressed yes. on camera yes. how you ain't watching that show. Yes. So uh, I would really like. <laughs> 
<laughs> to hear you go first. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So if I'm going to go first, um, I can give you the score first. Are we still doing that? Like, give you the score first. And oh, then, you like, doing the score first? Let's and then the we can just, like, go. Yeah. All score right. first. Score uh, first. Two out of five. Okay. 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 Uh. <laughs> oh, um, uh, three out of five. Okay. I'm going to have to decide with my man Josh here. Uh, it's two out of five. Wow. I'm going to say 2.5 oh. out of five. <laughs> um... And now to get into it, uh, I but I want to I want us to start with what we liked first. All right. Before we get into why you know because these scores are low. Compliment yeah. sandwich. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, nah, it's not a compliment sandwich. Nah. Like a compliment Oreo. It's not more even. of like a bed of like pizza on top of like old it's a tomatoes. Compliment pizza because yeah. the toppings are nice, and then you. And then it's a cauliflower pizza. Compliment cauliflower hey, pizza. Hey, are you trying to imply that cauliflower pizza is also not pizza? Garbage dog. <laughs> Please continue, oh, sir. God. What did I like about it? Um, <laughs> the Mandalorian. What? No. <laughs> and the Dark Saber. The Mandalorian and the Dark Saber. It's and- really interesting they retconned that about the Dark Saber. But it gets uh, it just gets heavier because uh, yeah. did, did I was like, not yeah, that I was before. Say, it was like the one boy was just swinging it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pre Vizsla. I was like, all right, either Sabine and pre Vizsla is like really actually strong. Or yeah, they but I mean, they probably well, were they familiar said, with the Lord too. But they said um, the reason why it got heavier is because what he was fighting it or something. Fighting like the that. will of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. Because so, what's the will of the dark saber? Is it to to rule Mandalore? And- nah, because when Kanan was training Sabine in Star Wars Rebels, like it was just like fine. Like she was just like angry, and maybe the dark saber is like, I oh, I need a person with. Pure Mandalore heart. <laughs> I need yeah. that angst. I need that Avril Lavigne angst. That, that is what Sabine had. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I I enjoyed uh, seeing Mando, and like he had like the fresh armor, and when we first see him, and he's in there doing his Mando thing. That scene was tight. Yeah, um, and then I, he cuts his leg wide open. Yeah, I appreciate that though. <laughs> I appreciated it too because he's not familiar with like handling a saber. Because we do, I will only say that because we don't know how soon after it is from the end of the Mandalorian mm-hmm. to that scene. Mm-hmm. So sure, if this is like one of the first times that he's whipped it out or whatever, <laughs> um, and like he's like just not used to it. Sure, I feel like, anywho, I feel like I feel like that was sure, whatever. Um, but yeah, Mandalorian, dark saber. Um, I could have even okay. Oh, we're talking about things that we like. Mandalorian, Dark Saber, um, the the Twi'lek who owned the club. Yeah, she was tight, man. Okay, that was it. Finnick was cool. Finnick was also cool. Actually, I, I I won't say that as like an afterthought. Finnick was cool. Period. Assertive statement. Finnick was cool. <laughs> no, that's, that's it. I'm done. Things I liked about this. Now, friends, there are, it, it, for those of you who are new here or who just don't know, I kind of am the, the, the buffer between a lot of our collective blur bar thoughts and statements in the internet because I'm very weary of the things that we say on the internet. But I'm about to say something that's going to go on the internet, and I'm sure the, the comment section will be alight with four comments. Um, Finnick... On screen is is the badass that people thought Boba Fett was in the eighties. Straight up, Boba Fett got by all like as a character. Like people are like, oh, he's he's such a badass. What I was like, what did what did he do? He really just stood around, <laughs> you know. Um, even if we go into the mm, comics, yeah, okay. Because okay, I was about to say, I was about to say you got watch what you watch your mouth because he was the comics and novelizations. Sure, but we were, we're talking mass majority of but people. But you're talking about the fan base. Screen, he was just standing around, brooding, just like with a gun in his hand. Just like you know, I love the High Republic. I think some of the cool stuff is happening. It ain't on screen. Sure, right? I love the Force Unleashed. I love. Like, I thought a lot of cool stuff happened. It ain't on screen, and it's not canon anymore. But um, on screen, Finnick is just like one undefeated. <laughs> Finnick was about that smoke. It's straight up. Bro. I mean, but she Always. she also is not undefeated. Yeah, I was about to say that gut shot was her. about to be <laughs> that gut shot was about to be it. Yeah, true. 
Um, Which I forgot. When did that happen? Was that uh, Mandalorian season one, episode five, the gunslinger? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so one, Phoenix, amazing. Um, I really enjoyed that. I like the story of like the guy who was in the business and now he's trying to kind of go legit and like change the game. And he's like, oh, I didn't see your litter. He's like, dude, I'm not wearing, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not riding a litter. Like I'm a grown man. Um, what else happened? It was, uh, go ahead. <laughs> it's so I appreciated the fact that he was not riding the litter. Mm-hmm. But to your point, he wasn't writing the litter because it's like, nah, because I handle mines. Yeah. And nah, Finnick handles yours. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't. All right. All right. So I'm, I'm going to wrap up here and get yeah, real I'm close. sorry. But no. like, go ahead. Things I really enjoyed. Um, It's like, there's a whole comparison thing about like outsiders coming to a community and then being weird. Specifically, like, it happens to be white men. Usually, like, we got the Pocahontas. We got the Avatar. We got the whole, like, a person comes out. But like, in Atlantis. Um, but I feel like Boba had like a respect for the Tuscans that like is not seen because I hear like on, on the internet, people are comparing a lot. I'm like, nah, I don't think Boba ever looked down on the Tuscans as a person. That's important. Sure. Um, the shootout scene with Boba and, uh, Din Djarin was absolutely amazing. Um, it was really cool. And I appreciate Who's this Dindjar? story. Huh? Who's Din The Mandalorian. His name is Din. Oh yeah. Mando. <laughs> But um, <laughs> it was really cool because I think once we got Grogu, stop. <laughs> once we got seeing Grogu go with Luke Skywalker, then we had like um, episode seven happened. So <laughs> and they really like cleaned that up. It was like no, no, and your your favorite mascot is fine. Everybody, right? Um, I didn't know how bad I needed to see Ahsoka talk to Luke. Like that was actually like I was watching that. I just was like really happy, and I was like, oh man, I like you know. And plus, I'm always just a huge fan of force users who aren't really aligned. So mm-hmm. now Grogu is another one of those Grogu, Ahsoka, um, Ezra. And so like, it, it's really cool. Um, what was also cool about that real quick was, um, because I had to like place it. I was like, wait a minute. And then, cause her, her age gap, because she was Darth Vader's like Anakin's, Padawan. Anakin's yeah. Padawan. Yeah. yeah. And so like to see her, talking to Luke, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, oh no, that checks out. Yeah, yeah. She's like, she's like almost 50, 60. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess orange don't crack either. <laughs> <laughs> she! <laughs> orange but, don't crack. Do you want orange don't crack make into a t-shirt? Let us know. Um, so for people who have played uh, Fallen Order, BD, the little uh, Yo. the little robot who like is the energy, oh, that he belongs to Cal Kestis. The main character of Fallen Order. I saw that robot. I lost my goddamn mind, dog. Because I was like, if they put Cal Kestis <laughs> on this screen, I can't be held responsible. All right. So, but maybe he'll show up in Ahsoka. Ahsoka, yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be tight. Yeah, but Ooh. anyway, because uh, uh, Cal Kestis and Ahsoka are about the same age. Yeah, like, he's a little bit younger than her. But um, once again, he was also a Padawan. Like, yeah, Grogu. Like, I would be fine if there was like uh, a almost like a buddy comedy, right? Of just all three of them <laughs> just doing force stuff, but kind of like looking not being Ezra. Jedi's. Yeah. And like no, looking for like I think Cal Cal I think Cal and Jezra uh, Jezra. Jezra. Cal and Ezra are Jedi, I think. Cal is Jedi because he was trained and he Ezra, was trained. But Ezra was trained by Ken. Anyway, sorry, yeah. we're going really off on. There was a lot, so there was lots for me to enjoy here from the, the lore perspective. Um we'll get into the, the story writing and how they do some stuff, but um yeah, please talk more. I liked what I liked um, was the inclusion of such of of Star Wars underworld. Mm, yeah, I think it was a missed opportunity, and we'll talk about that and what we didn't like. But what I did like was that Black uh, Kersantan mm-hmm. was like Santo was brought in in a way that like doesn't demonize who he is as a character. Yeah, he's just a dude. Because, you know, he's a, he's just a Wookiee out here who's got, you know, no ties to his Wookiee people because they're kind of just like, mm, black hair. And I'm like, oh, racism. <laughs> but then uh, <laughs> at the same time, he's also like the biggest, mm-hmm. the strongest. Too dark for me, like, boy. You got to stop. Um, and he's also kind of got like that, like, age old warrior vibe. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. Like he's he's been through enough. He's got the scars to prove it. Wait, what's his name again? Black Kersantan. Oh, with like three. Black Kersantan. Mm -hmm. He was. I he's Air like Force energy. He's Black Air Force he energy. Is, on. He was Black Force Black Air Force energy in a way that once again, Finnick was the one who's on like on site. Right. Black. Ker what's his name? Kersantan. 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 Yes. Does it start with a K? Yeah. Ker. K R R. I'm gonna call him BK. BK was also very much <laughs> like on like <laughs> like who wants that smoke? Always. And but he like in the comic books when they first wrote him up, I was like, this is great. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, because you see Wookie, you think like, oh, it's Chewbacca, Chewbacca yeah. friendship, yeah. But like, even, nah. but even, <laughs> not even. And for the people who sleep on like how you know, because you look at like Chewbacca as like a very like. Fuzzy teddy bear type vibe. They're mm -hmm. super strong. Like, like every Wookiee is out here to rip your limbs off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every Wookiee out here is on Air Force, you know, Black Air Force energy. But him, he's like Black Air Force High with Tim's. <laughs> like, you know, like the the NY cap on. You know. <laughs> straight backs. Right. Like, they should have gave right. me straight fitty. backs. Like Bobby Schmurder, like, you know, <laughs> is, is on site. And I, I appreciated that character and I thought. Missed opportunity to like continue to build on the underworld of it. Mm. I think the story itself, we've already talked about Fennec, and I appreciated that character, and I think that's a great character that we could have shined a little bit more light on. We were talking about things that we liked. Yes. Um, I'm trying. I'm really trying here. <laughs> um, I think seeing spaceships that I've seen in the past in this show – Every time I saw them, they made my heart go like, oh, yay. And then instantly was brought back down to like, cool your jets. Um, every time I see R2-D2, like, I'm always going to be like, I'm oh, home. That's cool. Every time I see R2-D2, I'm just like, I'm home. But um, I I really want to talk about the stuff I didn't like. Oh, All right. No. Like, <laughs> can't bang. Cad Bane. Bane. Oh, Cad, Cad Bane. Bane. Super hype. I was hype when, when I saw, I saw him. When I saw the yeah. silhouette with the hat, and yeah, I, was I was like, but like, oh, there's just go. no way. But I Duros, was like, let's go, because he's on site, too. Yeah. yeah. Duros do live for hundreds of years. Right. So. On top of, I, I also like the Marshall, but I feel like <sighs> he's, a, he's a Mando character, so, he's yeah, I mean. Like, I know, but like. Was that Thundercat? Yes, it was Thundercat. Yes, it, yes, it was. No, no, that wasn't Thundercat. The repair dude who fixed Finnick's stomach was Thundercat. Yeah, like. But you know he's I mean? he. Yeah, that's like, what he was asking. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I knew the white dude was not Thundercat. I've seen a video Joel from uh, Santa Clarita Diet. Yeah, exactly. He's also yeah. like Raylan Givens from Justified. Like, oh, so I'm like, every time I see him, I'm like, that's space Raylan Givens. Like, you know. I just, when you said it, it connected that he was from Santa Clarita. Mm -hmm. But, like, I know I've seen his face before. But, like. Uh, yeah. He's also played Agent 47 from Hitman. Like, you know. Whoa, really? We don't want to talk about that movie. Yeah. But well, he was in it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Can, I want to talk about the stuff we don't like. So yeah. I'm going to go first. Oh, because you to go first? I, I'm going first. Go ahead. Just because I got to get out of the way. Like Here's how they could have, very quickly, they could have fixed the show Boba Fett. If you and you can almost fix this, you at home, if you've watched Boba Fett, <laughs> if you go back and watch it and watch it as though in your mind Boba Fett's the villain, it works. I I did it to be on the side of who the Pikes himself, right. himself that he's still the bad guy, not the hero that you saw in Mando. But if you see him actually like trying to gain power and like do it through a very manipulative way, it works. Nah. That's what he did. No, I he didn't. disagree, but because there were there was there was this weird heartfelt thing they tried to give you with the Tuscan Raiders, sure, which made me feel like I had to check my own biases. But I was also like, Tuscan Raiders aren't real because I was like, they're all dead to me on site. Like I will, if I saw a Tuscan Raider blaster on, you know, pew, I shoot first. But sure. this show was kind of like, don't do that. They're people, and I was like, okay, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Other things I didn't like, um, he talked too much. Boba what do you Fett. Mean by this? Boba Fett talked too much. He said for words. him to have only said one line in all of Star Wars mythos before this show and before Mandalorian. The only line he but had then was after Mandalorian. Right. Hold on. He literally had one line in the entire movie, like oh, okay. universe. You're not talking about Clone Wars. Okay. Not talking about Clone Wars. We're not talking about Clone Wars. 
But I'm saying in the movies, we don't talk about. You know, he had like what two or three lines, and then the last line was a scream. I will home scream too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I feel like honestly, it was our star both, like pit. Yes, I feel like he would have been better if he had stayed dead. <laughs> this show made him so mid in ways that did not help the character for who we thought he was before. Right? Like when you thought of Boba Fett, like you thought of the OG gangster. Tell me I'm wrong. This man was soft. If he's bugging, tell him he's If bugging. I'm bugging, tell me I'm bugging. This Boba Fett, <laughs> this Boba Fett <laughs> Talked way too much and made too many concessions to be the bount- the cold blooded bounty killer he was, and I understand Clone Wars gave him some character development. Cad Bane, you know, revisiting that, all of those things. However, this Boba Fett did not give me the same like excitement, and him I- sitting on the seat as the daimyo, uh, daimyo, daimyo. Thank Which you. I was like. Stop doing that. They got to stop saying that out loud. Um, It just, it was like, why? He's like, I want to give back to the people. You're an under, like you're an underground mob boss. And how do you win the people? You're like, I'm going to save them. I guess. But like, you're also telling them that they don't have to pay you tribute anymore. So who's winning here? I would like to go next. Go ahead. Also, I, I, I think feel like you're going to be very positive, and I think we need that at the end. Right. I also think Luke Skywalker is a jerk as time continues to go on. Oof. Ooh. I, it is what it is. They they keep giving it. They keep <laughs> they keep putting him in our face as like the hero hero, but it's the Jedi Order needs to just dissolve. But that's what happened. This was back in time, right? This is back we're in time, still, and so he's still back loop. he's still we're, suffering you know from this, the back loop? this mindset. Obi-Wan Kenobi, ex- mm, yeah, but he's like still suffering from this like idea of hubris that I don't appreciate, and I understand that the rise of you still gonna watch it. You still gonna watch it though, and so because this Luke Skywalker has not experienced yet what happens in Episode Seven and all the other stuff, uh-huh. but. I, I I said what I said. I'm, I'm standing by it. I, I'm sorry. You look really downcast. No, but it's okay. Josh, Jayhawk, go ahead. Please say words. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Boba Fett was the wackest character in this whole season. <laughs> it's <laughs> it started off fine with learning. <laughs> it started off fine with learning the backstory of what happened after the Snarlack pit, but then I felt like there were two whole eps that nothing that had nothing to really do with Boba. Um, Mando is the bounty hunter that people thought Boba Fett was. Uh, The binary thought process of Jedi or nothing, uh, though understandable giving the context and setting, right? We're back. We're doing the back loop. Um, It's still tiring to see because we have moved on. Um, I can't wait to get out from under the Skywalker era. I'm more intrigued for the next season of The Mandalorian and would be fine if Boba didn't get another season. It's kind of lame that they killed Cad Bane. Um, that's the notes that I had. Uh, I think to the point of him being an under, an underground boss lord, but like, I think he wanted to push forward the fact that he would respect the people, and I think that's cool. I think as Boba Fett, when the mayor's like, "Nah, I'm not paying you a." nothing <laughs> it's it's time it's time to it's time to strap get the get, you know go to the trunk and like just handle lay your people business out. yeah it's like phoenix like yo do you want me to like handle it and it should have been like nah don't Fen- handle phoenix should have been the diamond i'm gonna handle it like phoenix should have been like whoa boba like can you chill right you don't like, have to get your hands dirty i'll do it for you but right. the, that did they did that show did not give that dynamic so i don't know for me, between that and like the Power Ranger bike crew, um, I was just Ugh. like, "You, like, ain't nobody scared of you, bro." Like when somebody's, I think actually a couple characters said it, like, it, "Don't yeah. nobody respect you." Yeah, the, uh, the water pillar dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, don't nobody like, who are you? Like, um, and I think there is a difference between showing people respect 
and being whatever Boba Fett was. And it's like, you can show people respect, but if you're trying to, like, be a legit daimyo, like, how... Like, I guess the question is, like, what was his end goal? Like, what was he trying to really be? Because, like, if you're if you're trying to be mayor, then, like, run for office, dude. Like, don't right. be like, I'm going to take over the biggest crime lord's seat, but, like, just be the the not mayor mayor, right? Like, the mayor. That's the point, though. Mayor's the figurehead, but, like, I, like, run stuff, like, down like in the down and dirty if you're gonna be in the down and dirty and your name is boba fett and you saying like i'm boba fett you need to show some boba fett actions and you you're not none of that my man to be more time in a back to tank <laughs> than actually like, out than actually out in the streets deprivation stuff. tank getting the like spa treatment don't nobody like you bro like he's trying to keep that clone figure <laughs> that's what he was trying to do before was- it sloughed off his face he got severe burns from the Sarlacc pit. That's of course he does. Real. Sure. Go ahead. Speak your piece, man. I'm sorry. Don't nobody like him. All right. I'm not even going to talk about the stuff that I don't like. I'm going to refute the stuff y'all don't like. <laughs> That's my plan right now. <laughs> All like, along, Sterling was the like. villain. <laughs> <laughs> All along. Over here charging my level three super. <laughs> Shinku. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. So, you got to remember this. Boba has been in the game since he's been 12 years old mm-hmm. as a bounty hunter, right? With Cad Bane, Aura Singh, uh, Bosk, everybody, sure. But that's just what he's been doing for so long. And I think this was a tale of, and we see it all the time in like mob stories and stuff where like a person's tired of the game and he's mm. trying to not, he's not really trying to get out as much as establish something that's more like more of a legacy. And that's what he was talking to Finnick about where he was like, you know, like, I can offer you loyalty, which no no uh, no person will ever also no job person will ever offer you, you know, and that's like something to consider, and that's why I didn't consider it. I like to believe so. He had this near death experience one, and near death experiences will literally change your brain chemistry. Sure. Um. So he had this near death experience. He's trying to like kind of get out of the game. I think he wants to be good to people, but also just be. I think he's more the reason that I say like you can still make a case that he's a villain is because he's completely out for all of the, all of this tattooing stuff for himself. It's not like he's like, Oh, uh, my whole thing is I want to make tattooing great again. It's like, no, no, he's literally just trying to <laughs> establish. <Mad ass. laughs> he's just trying to establish something for him that will continue to work until he is dead. Um, so I think, you know, it works that he's, like, kind of a villain. I think the thing going in, and I think most of the internet is like, oh, he's not, like, this badass dude. It's like, well, y'all made up a lot of stuff in your head. Now I had to check myself because I was mm, a I agree. Mm. Boba Fett lived off of fan fiction. Right. Sure. The life um, of Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett exists because of fan fiction. Yeah, and I did the same thing with Phasma. I thought Phasma was like, oh, man, she's going to be all like this. And then I watched Resistance, and I was like, that's, that's fine. I also did not read the Phasma novel. Anyway, going back, like, we have to check like okay this dude is trying to do something different he had this near-death experience he's like you know and like boba was an asshole for a long time but a lot of that was like rage and people always talking to him about his dad straight up sure. all the time i mean like he like, that's he, the only way you end up being boba vet is like hey you're not as good as your daddy <laughs> but you, right. you you know you could be something out here i would get mad too <laughs> you know what happens all the time Le- tangent, real Especially quick. Tangent alert. I'm sorry. But no. People be like, you not like your daddy. And I'm like, I'm not supposed to be. My dad used to be out here giving rides to people. Just be like, where you need to go? I'll take you. I am not my father. Two, then my dad be like, yeah, like, people come over to my house. Hey, man, you know, your dad used to just invite people over all the time. I've never been to your house. I am not my father. It's just, there's too many things. I would be Boba Fett in this situation. <laughs> Trust and believe. So, big dad story aside, um, <laughs> the book of big dad. I, would, <laughs> I, I relate to that. I'm think. I thank you for explaining that a little I bit more. I think the the issue I have with that is that he chose to go into the bounter hunter business. No, mm-hmm. he didn't. Mm-mm. No, he didn't. He didn't have a choice. He did, he did not. He didn't have a choice. He's got but the DNA. Of he the best. did have the choice of being the daimyo. So if we're wait, if we're going back, who, if we're so, doing okay, he was let's say he was kidnapped by um 
Was he kidnapped? He wasn't kidnapped. Nope. Because by... Aura, Cad Bane, Aura Singh, and Boss used to run with Django. So they just kind of like already knew this kid. They knew him, but how did he end up on their ship? Because his dad died. And it was like, well, he doesn't actually have any family. So that was like the closest thing in his family. Yeah. So did he decide to go on that ship? Kind As of, but not really. When he was 11? I don't was know. Was he kidnapped to go on that ship? Josh, he was 11. Or... Did he decide to go well, on I mean, that ship? You got to stop saying he was 11. Otherwise, I'm going to start making... That makes sense that he was kidnapped because he was 11. So stop saying and that. he literally but, watched like, his father. Okay, let's talk... There I'm, was grief, gonna, but that's a different breakdown of Boba Fett. That's, this is Patreon because I will just pop off for literally 12 minutes. <laughs> anyway, um, I see your point about we are the choices that we make. Sure. Mm. Okay. <laughs> sure. Some people feel attacked. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Sure. I am not my father. Did, did Boba Fett? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> did Dan make different choices? That's fine. <laughs> so it did. Don't ask me for a ride. <laughs> I'm about to be out here bounty hunting. <laughs> what? How did we get from like rise to church? That's why Bob <laughs> bounty hunting. <laughs> so <laughs> I think. <laughs> He's gonna wake his kids up, and he's gonna be up <laughs> upset at us. He ain't, he ain't gonna, gonna be laughing for long. Nope. <laughs> oh man, I'm but, sorry, proceed. Uh, mm. So Boba, under the shadow of his father, sure, um, and that can make a person short sighted, right? So you have to keep asking yourself, like, okay, what's the next thing? Um, Luke, okay, the Jedi, right? We were raised like when Star Wars was first written, there had to be a battle between good and evil, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. And then we had the nuance that happened to the prequels to be like, maybe the Jedi aren't that uh, cool, right? And so, you know, Luke is all, I'm a Jedi, like my father before me. And he like really leans into this doctrine that he was never actually taught. He had to read sure. from the books just like Ray, right? Of course. So, I, so hold on. Before you like really pop off, I said like, I get it within the context of like where this story is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that I'm tired of it. Like this goes to like my attack on Star Wars probably as, as a, a whole like, as, an I, <laughs> as an ip yeah like it's just like I'm we're just stuck tired we're stuck like, living in the side uh, the skywalker yeah saga. like that's my, that more my but, thing but i get it within the context that's why i wasn't like screw this i'm turning it off and i'm not watching it like i i get it i get it i did turn it off in the the first 10 minutes of the <laughs> after the first 10 minutes of the finale I was like i'm done oh really i oh, was that's like one thing else i didn't know that finale was ooh, that finale was just like weak. oof everything was just oof about it Anyway, um, then the Rancor did the whole like King Kong thing on the building, and I was like, ah, this is don't do that. Rancor, it's not like I thought it's not like no, it's um, a Rancor. Rancor. You're right, yeah. you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, but anyway, so Luke, I think is he <laughs> did he give Grogu an ultimatum for sure? That's what the Jedi are about, though. But that's become, the reason why they fail to become a yes. And but I see at, that in and that then context. Luke, and, it and makes sense. Like twenty right. years, yeah. These <laughs> <have to> fail. <laughs> Um, it makes sense. So, I mean, he's also 150. And I was Grogu about to is say, allowed to make these choices. That's the thing that, like, Grogu, Grogu's lifespan is going to be way more than, like, Din Djarin's and Luke's and, like, basically everybody. So the attachment that he's going to make to Din is, like, there's a part that you can make a case of, like, you should really cut this attachment now because, like, it's only going to be whatever it's going to be, which is, one, that also fits within the Jedi anyway. And then, two, mm. like I said earlier, like, we can just now write. Grogu and you outlive your daddy. <laughs> yeah. You just going to outlive your daddy, all of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then there's, I don't know how many people outside of, like, maybe some Duros or somebody, like, that have uh, lifespans like that species. Wookiees. Sure. Wookiees do live a long time. Wookiees live a long time, and so that's why, like, Yoda and... Uh, Chewie are like friends for so long prior to episode one because mm-hmm. he's just like I remember you yeah I remember how your daddy doing oh he did <laughs> okay thoughts and prayers no yeah. I, I definitely I understand that I feel I like that. before we go any further right mm-hmm. just because now this is starting to like go into ranting territory <laughs> oh I'm good for a Star Wars rant baby uh I think we'll stop here and if anyone else wants to hear us rant. Further into this, you know, check out the Patreon video. Um, the pacing of the show was weird. The finale was weird, but we really, really love to see Danny Trejo. Sure. Who's that? Danny Trejo was the guy with the, the Rancor the trainer. Rancor. Oh, also Rancors are space pit bulls. So um, <laughs> the, the guy who brought the Rancor. Uh, Danny, Danny yeah. Trejo. The, what's his name? Machete. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, or he's Danny Trejo. Like he's in too many things for yeah. you oh, not yeah, to Danny know. Oh, yeah. Danny Trejo. Yeah. 
I think he's hit that that actor status of like him, uh, Nick Cage, Christopher Walken. Like they, just, they I would just imagine them. like just let him show up anywhere, and I'd be like, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think this this show does set a precedence for Ahsoka. Yeah. And what what that show could possibly be potentially, mm. um, because she didn't really align herself with Luke, no. and so. And I think that's what this was. This this show was more of a springboard for all their other yeah. IPs. We get like Andor. Um, we get the Mandalorian season three. It was exactly. like, oh, if you want to purify yourself, you got to go there. Yeah. We um we get Ahsoka. We get uh what else? Even just the concept of like, okay, what's going to happen in Tatooine now that literally everybody is there. Finnick killed everybody in that room. Yeah. Right. Like so, there's no. I also think the Pikes weren't a good villain. I sure. I, but I think the problem was they they were almost like the. The goop monsters from Power Rangers to me. The putties? Putties. There we go. <laughs> the goops. Them too. <laughs> no shade to uh, that one actress who made that one thing. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow? Oh, yeah, goop. Anywho. Um, but I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think the... Um, you proud of yourself. The issue with that is because they were mainly about business. Right. But the Pikes themselves are a syndicate and that have always kind of been around. Here's, here's the thing. Is the thing <laughs> pikes are located on the mid rim for real, for real, right? So we're on the outer rim, so they they probably sent like they Darius, out here expanding, just like <laughs> Daryl, maybe <laughs> Daryl. Right. Um, I think the issue with having people who are like about that business be the 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 villains, if you're if your anti person is not about the business, of yeah, it. That's, that's where it that's lacks. the thing. Like Boba was not. About the there was a lot of, of principle. He was a lot of principle more than the but business. Like, yes, but like if you run in a, a syndicate, you need business. You need funds, bro. You it need- would have made more sense to run this almost like a Sopranos. Exactly. Mm. Like to run the show kind of in the Sopranos kind of environment. Like the huts coming at you. Like the, yeah. the, the dog face bull. Yeah. Uh, tra- yeah. Phil Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like have all of them coming at you at once to the point where you're like, how do it's, I manage? How do I especially if you're making Boba Fett really take a back seat? Right. Like if he's really like, yo, like I'm I'm too old for this shit. Right. And, like if he's really yeah. that, he needs to put he knows that he needs hitters in place to do the to And do then the, the, the Cyberpunk Power Ranger thing didn't work for me. And I was just like, Okay, you don't have to do this. They weren't that lethal. No, they I weren't. Like. And at the same time, like <laughs> not even really resourceful. Like they were just kinda like Ah, uh, we're being pinned down by a fire. Right, like the one ball that was resourceful one time was like his eye when he was at the like spaceport parking lot and was kind of like, yeah, there's pikes. The you could have had three kind man, right? Like you could have had anybody else on a non-colored like hyper colored bike, just be like, hey, Boba, some like there's people here. Like rolling around in colorful bikes is like in the it land just, of sand. It's like you you don't think that they don't know yeah. who you. I don't know who that part was for. I don't know who uh, what audience they were trying to target. Uh, Probably I think the colored the, folk. No, generations two two generations younger than us. Not even them, because it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. But uh, I don't know though, because they were like Thundercat like, made sense yeah. for the role he played it. But like, I would have liked to have seen him more episodes <laughs> versus. Whatever that was, because that just but wouldn't. If you're gonna have him in there, then the people that he's modding on would have made need sense. To be like he could have been like their lieutenant, like. But they need to be dope. Exactly. Nobody who was supposed to be dope was, was dope. dope, with the exception of Fennec. But like she was, I don't but she's she was been supposed, dope. To, yeah, she, she's been dope. Like Boba was supposed to be dope. He was not. If you got people who are like you're employing into your into your convoy, they need to be dope. Also. They spent too many episodes doing flashbacks. I wasn't mad at the flashbacks. I'm not going to lie. Here's why I'll say that. To build up to this whole, like, dances with wolves or dances with Tusken Raiders thing that they were trying to do. (laughs) It just (laughs) didn't hit for me. We've reached the end of the episode. We sure have. Because that whole making the weapon thing. And for like the Tuscan Raiders, that weapon is mid. It's a mid weapon when everybody but, else out here doing using blasters and all that. And I was like, I get that allegory you making, but you don't want to do it here, because Tuscan Raiders before this show were straight up villains. No, not in Mandalorian season two. Less so in Mandalorian season two. 
but everywhere else. Obi Wan was like straight up lobbing off arms. Yeah, I so think, but that that <laughs> suffers from like, racism. Writing, Is that what you want to say? Yeah, just gonna call it racism. Well, I mean, the writing of its time, right? space racism, species speciesism. <laughs> but the writing of its time, like we did, they didn't give the characters any depth because, like, how much the because this show one straight up said that like Tuscans are the indigenous peoples of Tatooine, right? Sure. Mm, so yeah. like, That's, and yeah, like I said, dancing with Tuscan. <laughs> um, so like that, I'm not being insensitive. I'm just saying that's what they were trying to you know do. This episode the, is called Dancing really, with Tuscans. It's really Don't do that. Don't do that. Nope. <laughs> that can't be it. No, it cannot. No, it's the book. But of we could be the book of Waba Fett. Okay. Yes, it is. Anyway, Waba Fett was not this episode is sponsored by Waba Fett. Anyway, um the writing of the time did not take into account the depth of the the people. You know, mm. so like that's why I think Tuscans were like written off because it was like, Oh yeah, sure. they're here. Um, but like now we have you gotta explain just better it. writing. Yeah. <laughs> and all that and you also have to be very mindful and like very PC of just like the way you do world building. Sure. Yeah. So because before that it was just like okay to have a bunch of white people land on a different planet and just like kill a species. Mm-hmm. But so, what I will say about the Tuscans though is that <clears> like a court I mean, I've always wondered like what the Tuscans look like underneath like the masks or whatever. Like they don't get they don't. They're not born with like metal eyes, right? Like, no, right. No. So like, I always wondered about that. I thought we would see that this time. Nope. nope. Um. So to give them, for them to literally be colorblind, is like an important you, thing. Gives you leeway to do some stuff that you may not do otherwise. Um. That being said, I think we've reached the end of this episode. I think so too. Yes, thank you, everyone. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is great. This is Booze News and Reviews. We talk about some things. Uh, we drink some stuff. We... Right. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have, uh, you know what? If you could just like, comment, share, subscribe, that would be great. Tell um, somebody else about this. Yeah. Oh, and check out our party peoples. We got we got family out here. We yeah. got um, Movio's podcast. We got Ideal Tone. We got Blurred on the Street. We'll make sure to list them. Er- so that everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Go check them out too. Shout out to Bryce Dallas Howard for giving the best episode of the season. But that's another thing either here nor there. But as we like to say here at the movie, y'all have a blessing. Good night, everyone.